Welcome to the fourth episode of Failure to Fracture. It is a series of uh, videos in which I detail the ways and reasons I have failed over the last couple decades in learning the song Fracture by King Crimson. More specifically, learning the perpetual motion piece in the middle called the Moto Perpetuo, uh, played by Robert Fripp on the album Starless and Bible Black. One thing that I got obsessed with was being overly precise. And what I mean there is, um, for example, the, the mechanics of playing, at least in terms of what I picked up from the introduction uh, guitar circle course, uh, was you would move your hand to the string using your elbow and then you would use your wrist to move, move the pick through the string. And so this idea that you would bring the wrist via the elbow to a string, play a note, and then bring the wrist to another string via the elbow and play another note. And then bring the wrist to another string via the elbow. It, I, was, I was really trying to follow the rules a little too closely, I think. And maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe this is just a cheat that I'm coming up with. Um, but in playing what I call the death picking section, which is what I opened up with. It's a lot of notes and a lot of string skipping. After some time, I started thinking about how do I make this more efficient? And rather than move from string to string to string to string, if every note is on a different string, What if I just moved my wrist to the right places and then let my wrist do the rest? So I, I kind of picked apart this section as kind of three main movements. There's when you play that octave and then So the first section is to move from, from here to here. The second movement is, and the third movement is back to the beginning. It's just a cluster of those three main motions. Well, I thought, all I really need to do is move my hand in this instance from the the fifth string to the third string. So from above the fifth string to between the second and third strings. And then when I'm between the second and third strings, I could just use my wrist instead of using my elbow to move the wrist from string to string. So in that that respect, it's like I was too closely following the rules. What I really needed to do was just bring my hand to the right place. So if I think about where to move the pick, it should be above the fifth string and then between the second and third strings. And then for the next note, just above the fourth string. So I'm really only moving my hand between two different places. 
And once I thought about that, it unlocked this whole death picking section. Now, I still don't play it perfectly, but I, I can play it so much better than I used to play. Uh, and without stress, I've been practicing it on and off all day uh, after several weeks of not playing through the piece. And just by thinking about the pick placement differently, I can go weeks without playing the piece and then pick up the guitar and practice a bit and feel like I haven't skipped a beat. Um, so in my belief that I needed to so closely follow the rules, I was inhibiting the motion, the freedom of playing that part effectively. Secondly, um, it really took a while for me to hone in on which muscles I needed to use when moving the pick, when, when playing notes with the pick. Really, it's, it's this muscle here for me. And when I'm free here, then everything is open. Like, then I can really move quickly. I get carried away. It's just fun to play at this point, but um, which is actually a good thing because it used to be really frustrating <laughs> to play. So now that it's good and fun, that's that's a totally different experience. Um, but again, for me, it took unlocking this muscle, and paying attention to this muscle. So all I really for the death picking section, well, all I really need to do is use my elbow to move, not two strings, but two areas above or between strings and then let my wrist do the rest that was like someone had paved the road and i <laughs> i was then able to walk on it so um i don't know if this is going to be particularly helpful but i did play uh, along a little bit with um a guy named octavio in the um formerly known as the uh, Guitar Circle of Mexico, now known as the Contemporary Guitar Ensemble, and we did a Skype session, and we talked about this uh, for probably 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and he found that even in his early exercises, it seemed to help him out. Um, so I don't know where he is on that. I should talk to him about it, but for me, it made a huge difference. So if you're trying to play this piece, think less about being overly precise and moving the pick to each string and think more about making the best use of the space so that your wrist can do as much of the work as possible. It's really a, a technique of efficiency um, and it doesn't, it may not make sense unless you sit down and try to play it. And if you'd like to try playing it and you can't figure out what I'm talking about, just let me know <laughs> and we can do a Skype session or something like that and talk about it. So hopefully this was helpful for you and hopefully you can see that um, this technique has allowed me to be a lot more precise, ironically, and to play the piece at a greater tempo without physical stress and with like I can play this for an hour and not really hate myself. <laughs> So if you have other um, techniques or experiences, I'd love to hear them. Leave a comment, send an email to anthony at makewordmusic.com. Um, whatever, I'm pretty easy to reach. So uh, I'll see you in the next episode.
Thank mm-hmm. you.